Now, you know, you make chemical decisions every day from morning to night. Do you believe that? <laughs> Let's talk about a day and the kind of decisions that you make. And I want to show you how you should be thinking in terms of chemistry about all of these decisions that you make. Sounds good. As I get older, I tend to be more aware of, of chemicals in the environment, in my food, in my personal environment, like my home. Well, I eat uh, organic uh, fruits and vegetables. When all those stories came out about the uh, bisphenol A in the bottles, I changed the kinds of bottles that I used. I'm not really worried about it because I'm an adult and I'm healthy generally. We get the organic spray for the weeds and that's that's really it. The street here, right, they're probably way more dangerous than anything else, right? The fumes you get here or smoking. I want to show you how by thinking in terms of chemistry, uh, you can kind of lead yourself to making appropriate decisions. Just think of what you start the day with. Pretty obvious. Most, cup of coffee. Most people do a cup of coffee. <laughs> There are decisions to make there, you know? Is it gonna be filter, is it gonna be regular, is it going to be espresso coffee? Coffee contains a number of known cancer-causing agents, all of which are natural, things like furfural. But coffee itself does not cause cancer. Why? Because these cancer-causing agents are there in very small doses. And furthermore, coffee contains a variety of antioxidants which mitigate the effect of those known carcinogens. What kind of juice do you drink in the morning? Uh, it depends what we have in the fridge. Let's see. Sometimes it's orange juice, sometimes it's grapefruit juice. Oh, looks like it's grapefruit juice. You know what? It, it matters. It, it matters. That's a chemical decision whether you're going to be drinking orange juice or grapefruit juice. Depends on taking any medication or not. Grapefruit juice contains compounds called tyrannocumarins, which can interfere with the action of certain drugs such as cholesterol-lowering drugs and some blood pressure-lowering drugs and can actually increase the activity of those drugs and that can be an issue. Uh, you take vitamins, for example? Yeah, I take a multivitamin every day. Well, you see, you've already made a decision that you're going to take one. It's questionable whether or not you really need to take it. It depends on your diet. If you have a proper, well-balanced diet, generally you don't need a supplement, except for one, vitamin D. But I thought I got enough vitamin D from the sun. Well, that's what a lot of people think. But chances are you're not getting enough from the sun. How many people go out into the sun today without putting on sunscreen or without putting it on their children? And the fact is that by that you are blocking some of the UV rays that cause production of vitamin D. I found your rubber ducky. Actually, not a rubber ducky, it's a plastic ducky. And it's very soft and pliable. And the reason for that is that chemicals called phthalates we also know them as plasticizers are added. They're sort of internal lubricants. In Europe, they have eliminated phthalates in toys for children under three years old. Why? Because some of these, when fed to mice or rats, have shown developmental problems or interference with hormone levels. However, the industry in North America has uh, taken this into account and uh, has moved. And the chemicals that are now used, the phthalates, are the ones that have not been shown to cause any harm in, in children. We can all lie awake at night worrying about the chemicals that we use in our life. The point, of course, is that there are no safe or dangerous chemicals. There are safe ways or dangerous ways to use chemicals.